what's this about? Was it Tony chewing gum off your toes? Oh. <laughs> it was just me and Mike and Tony. We were, we were in Stacy's, him. Stacy's mom's hot tub. It was 30 years ago when Tony first got on the team, um, we were teasing him. Yeah. I forgot how it happened, but it's like, dude, if you want to be part of the team, um, let me have your gum. I took his gum, I, I stuck it in my toes. Like in between the toes? In between oh, my yeah. toes, rubbing it through my toes. Oh, go, rub you, you chew this gum now. And then you can be part of our team. He did. Wow. It's in his book. I think he wrote it in his book. Oh, really? He was laughing the whole time. At well, least it was clean can. from the chlorinated yeah. water. Your feet yeah. were clean. Yeah. But it's still through my toes. Yeah, no, that's gnarly. <laughs> Did you both get to go to George Harrison's castle? I did. Yep. You were both there. Yeah. Is that one of the craziest things? We were on tour in, in, in England yeah, yeah. at the time. His son. His son was 10 years old at yeah. the time. 13. And, uh, was he? Right. No, he's 10, dude. 10. Right. He's 10, mm -hmm. and Danny. he was a huge fan of skating, huge fan of Bones Brigade. We get the call from the distributor, and he says that, yeah, um, they want you to uh, go over to the Harrison's house, their son skates, and to meet him and whatever. And they sent a car to pick us up and take us like, I don't know, what was it, like an hour or something away from far. there. It was out in the boondocks. And we get into <laughs> we get to these giant, giant gates and they opened up and there's like this giant lake that was in like three parts. <laughs> like it flowed into each wow. other. The gate was, there was this huge house. We're like, is that the Harrison's house? We're like, it's like, no, that's the gatekeeper's house. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the gatekeeper's house uh, to where we're going? Like, okay, all right. So I wonder what the house looks like. <laughs> it was so surreal because we, like, we go to get out and there's a beetle. There's George Harrison, his wife, and his son, Danny. And like, they were just totally down to earth people. And like they knew all of us who we were from the videos. And we had a nice chicken dinner and met uh, some of the son's friends and they were just totally cool. And then... Uh, well, you know what? We didn't even expect him to be there. We were just like, you want to go have dinner at George Harrison's house with his son? Yeah, sure. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. Fun thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> How is it looking back now? Like I watched the documentary last night. I rewatched the documentary last night and I was like, wow. How is it looking back now on the, like, you know, with what Lance says about how he felt that you didn't want him on the team when he got on and there was like a beef there? Oh, well, like, you know, you're, you're talking a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, of course. <clears throat> I was jealous, plain and simple, because yeah. he lived right by Stacy. I think people up front will think, you know, they might think, uh, well, you didn't want Lance on the team because maybe he wasn't good enough or something. It was nothing like that. Lance was a great skater. Yeah. But it was just my jealousy towards Stacy and how I live so far away. You know? uh, Stacy used Lance a lot in a lot, a lot of videos because he was available. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like we were around. Uh, you know, he lived yeah. across the country. I lived up north, seven hours away. So. But when I saw the documentary, there's a lot of things that Lance said that I, I felt that weren't true. Yeah. That was his self-perception of himself. Yeah. So. There, there, I mean, even Grasso has been critical of the documentary. <clears throat> like, you know, there's been a lot of people that have been critical of the documentary saying, well, I don't know, it was he's the only one. Or, he's the only one, basically. Grasso's yeah. the only yeah. one no, I've I ever heard. The, really what I wanted to say was the fucking Bones Brigade documentary sucked. Yeah. Stacy Peralta should be <laughs> fucking ashamed of himself. When it comes to documentaries, you can't please everybody, and people are gonna want to see something. Like when they go, like, okay, this is the Bones Brigade. This is what I want to see, and it's not in there. Man, that thing sucked. <laughs> Ray yeah. Bones wasn't in there. Yeah. Jay Smith wasn't in there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gelfin. Always. You know, but it wasn't about them. Right. The story that that <laughs> Stacy wanted to tell was from 1980 to 1990, what happened in those 10 years? Right. Where was Ray Bones mm -hmm. in 1981? Mm -hmm. Not there. Yeah. Where was Jay Smith? Not there. Where was Alan Gelfin? Not there. Yeah. Who was there from 1980 to 1990? Right. That's the story he wanted to tell. Right. That's the Bones Brigade documentary. Yeah. But when I you get people that. like saying like, we do this for invert 30 years later and people are going, well, where's Rodney Mullen? Right. <laughs> well, where was he 30 years ago? Yeah. 
He said, Johnny Rads. He's not at the chin ramp. So why do people ask him where he's going? You could have had him on the flat of the head. Pogoing on the coping. Yeah. Uh, but you know, everyone's got their expectations of what they want to see. And if their guy's not in it, the thing sucked. So also in the film, you were, there was a, there was a part where I sort of got the impression that you were trying to communicate how cutthroat things were getting with the, you know, the competitiveness between the team and skateboarding in general. And then it went into you learning the McTwist or inventing the McTwist. So was it a conscious thing of like, I saw Alan invent the Ollie. I saw Cab invent the Cab. I need to invent. Oh, absolutely. I thought about it, you know, but I was like, uh, it, it, it took a while, you know, uh, especially doing something that you've never done. And, and that trick is, you know, something that you can possibly really take yourself out with. I'm just like, man, I just want to be the first in the world to ever do a trick, you know. Was there a building block to it? Was there something that was prior to it that you knew where you were like, like if you learn a kickflip, you can learn a double flip, like you can picture it. Oh. But with the McTwist, it seems like there's no... There was, because there was roller skaters that were doing 540s. Oh, so okay. we had already seen that in our mind. They we were we knew around. that they were spinning and spinning 540s in the air with the roller skates. Yeah. And there's only one guy that actually acted like he was skateboarding, which we kind of gave respect to, besides Duke Rennie, was Fred Blood. Mm -hmm. And we thought, wow, you know, at least they're trying to grab, you know, like a skateboarder. Pretend you know? like he's grabbing, but you know, he's grabbing a skate. Yeah. Stacy would do 540 slides. Stacy would do 540 slides yeah. in these brown bowls in yeah. Marina, and they were big bowls. They're not little bowls. They're, they're what? They were like 11 feet tall, these uh -huh. brown bowls. And he would, he would spin 540s. So he would oh, do it okay. on a skateboard, but on the wall. So, you know, sublimely, I'm sure Mike thought that in his head, you know, that Stacy's doing the slide, the roller skaters are, are doing it in the air. It's got to be possible if you just grab and hold on. I think with any new trick, you know, you're trying different ways, and especially with the 540, you, you, you're, you know, I thought about how I could grab, you know, yeah. obviously every way you grab isn't going to work immediately, you yeah. know? And when I finally, I mean, of all grabs, I grabbed mute, like, like <laughs> what? You know, and... Uh, it actually, it just centered me and I could get into a ball and I could spin yeah. fast, you know? And it just worked. While we were on the topic of tricks, how long after, because in the documentary it talked about you inventing the Cavalarial after seeing what was possible with the Ollie. What was the space and time from when the Ollie was invented to when you invented the Cavalarial? When, was, when did the Ollie come out? 79? 78-ish. 78? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I remember watching Eddie Alguera skate a contest in 1979 and I never had seen anyone do a fakey ollie before. So then in, in 1980s is when he invented the Caballero. Yeah. I was in the right place at the right time. That, that's all I can say uh, for the fakey 360 ollie. I mean, I was at Winchester sitting at the Clover Bowl and I was watching this professional skateboarder who rode for Tunnel named Robert Shaffley. And one of his favorite tricks was RB slide, which is a Rick Blackheart, where you kind of go up and you put your hand on the coping and you slide to fakie. Okay, yeah. And then he would come up and he would do fakie 360 kick turns on the tile. And I remember just sitting there watching him do the trick over and over again. And then one time he pumped super hard and he kind of fling and flailed in the air because he pumped too hard, hit the coping and just flailing in the air and spun around. And because I was sitting there and I was watching that, I was like, I wonder if you could actually make that, you know? Because I could do yeah. fakey ollies at that time already. I wonder if you could actually hit your wheels, hold your legs in until you spun all the way around and the board sucked to your feet and come around and so then because i was there at that right moment that's what put the idea in my head let's try it that's right you know this was uh in between um the colton contest and the marina del rey contest so i remember hearing um that lance and and neil went back to whittier and tried to do the fakie 360 all air and they couldn't even get close. So I think it was either Neil or Lance ended up grabbing like, I think it was Indy, 
And they were saying they felt at that time, yeah. politically correct, we can't really say that now, gay but also yeah. they thought it was gay to yeah. grab. And that's where the term gay twist came from. And a funny story about that is once they learned the gay twist, I was like, that's a new trick. So I stopped doing Cavalarios oh, wow. for the longest time. And I just did you went gay. gay twist. So for the wow. longest time in contest, that's all I did. I didn't even do Cavalarios anymore. Wow. I just did gay twist because that was a new trick. So and what's funny way. is snowboarders can't call that on national TV. They've had, they've had to change the name. They can't say, oh, we gay just twist. did a gay twist off that. Yeah, so I think it's gay. They can't say it. <laughs> <laughs>